Well, now as uh, Monty Python used to say, now for something completely different. As, uh, as you can see from the, uh, from the initial slide, uh, several things. One, uh, we are dealing with a, uh, with a system for building stress resilience. Uh, we are talking about a uh, SBIR project that is uh, sponsored by DARPA but that also has uh, contributions from Office of Naval Research, uh, from the Air Force, and even from some uh, joint commands, as, uh, as we'll point out. I want to thank uh, people for inviting us to make this presentation, and I feel very honored to be called a, uh, a success story. Uh, but I want to, uh, to make the point that this is still a work in progress. And as, uh, as we'll see, we're, we're reaching the, uh, the point where uh, we have to work very hard to ensure ultimate uh, success. Uh, we'll go through this. Uh, Perceptronics uh, Solutions is a company that uh, sort of falls in that middle range of, uh, of small companies. Uh, we're about uh, 35 people. Uh, but in line with, uh, with present trends, we are well distributed around the country. Uh, we have most of our people in the Falls Church area, uh, a, not quite a stone's throw, but very close to uh, the DARPA and the Office of Naval Research. Uh, I am from Los Angeles on the, uh, on the West Coast. Uh, we actually even have a person in Arizona in the, uh, in the middle of... Uh, of Phoenix. The team that we formed to, uh, to perform this, uh, this project uh, was all small organizations and, uh, and small companies. The, uh, this is, a, I love this, uh, <laughs> this is a really powerful laser. Thank, thank you for the loan, uh, Jim uh, Sweeney. Uh, the Institute of, uh, of Heart Math is a pioneer in a uh, type of biofeedback uh, mechanism that I'm going to tell you about uh, a little later. The company Ease Interactive has been active uh, for many years in marketing uh, biomedical devices and devices for uh, general uh, mental uh, well-being. The requirement that we responded to was set by a, a DARPA uh, PM named uh, Commander Joseph Cohen. And he was interested in mechanisms that could inoculate war fighters against the, uh, the negative effects of stress. Uh, we know that there are many negative effects of stress. There are effects on immediate performance, there are post-traumatic uh, stress effects. Uh, who has ever water this is? I hope they're healthy. <laughs> hey, you got to take a chance every once in a while. <laughs> and we know, we know there are long-term effects. There are social effects. There are effects on, uh, on family. We... Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> we also know that these effects uh, go beyond people who are uh, actively engaged in combat. Uh, there are effects uh, just with long-term deployment. There are effects that people have because of what they witness, because they, they have what they have to do. And there are just effects because stress affects uh, many people as well. And we also realize that, that these stress effects are not unique to the, to the military, uh, that there are other populations that want to, to uh, overcome the negative effects and also, as we point out here, that perhaps take advantage of the positive effects of stress because there are positive effects of stress, as we'll point out in a, uh, in a few minutes. So the goal we set ourselves was to develop a mobile, individualized training program that could be pretty widely distributed, first to military personnel, 
but always with, a, uh, with an eye toward non-military personnel as well. As many people have uh, pointed out, uh, SBIRs are multi-year programs, and uh, this, was, uh, this is no exception. Uh, we started with a, uh, with a phase one. We were able in phase one to demonstrate a mock-up of what we had in mind as a training program. Uh, we did it on a PC, even though our ultimate goal was to put it on a, uh, on a mobile device. In the phase two part of the program, we actually developed uh, the, uh, the complete system and tested it to where it was uh, reliable in the field. We were fortunate to get at that time an option which in a sense was a, was a type of second phase two and the option phase gave us the ability to run evaluation studies which I will uh, tell you about. On this part of the, of the chart, I've said that the things that we had to do, and on the bottom part of the thing of the chart, I've, I've shown uh, things that other people, transition partners, uh, SMEs, uh, subject matter experts, and other people involved in the program uh, helped us to do. And it was in this part that other people invested in the program, primarily in the evaluation portion. Two big ideas uh, underlie the, this, uh, the innovations in the, in the program. Uh, the top graph is something that, that I ran into years ago when I was doing a, a program for the Navy uh, in underwater performance. I was at UCLA at the time and, and we got ourselves into areas of measuring anxiety and stress and, and its effects and I ran into this really interesting thing in the literature that uh, some psychologists in Canada had studied the effects of stress on parachutists and they made a very interesting observation. They found out that expert parachutists and novice parachutists reached the same level of stress but experts reached at 24 hours before the jump and the novices reached it right at the time of the jump. And the conclusion that they, uh, that they, that they drew from this was that the experts were able to harness the energy of the stress and use it effectively in preparing for the jump. Okay, so this was an idea that if you could self-regulate if you could control your, your, the energy of your stress, you, you could do better in stressful situations. And it turned out uh, that there was a way to do that. And it's, uh, it's a way based on a, uh, on a physiological measure that has gotten a lot of attention lately. And it's called heart rate variability. Without going, I, I just don't have either the time or the knowledge to go into a really deep explanation. But what's happening in this graph is that we have a normal variation in our beat-to-beat -beat interval, and that can be expressed as a, as a variation in, in heart rate. It turns out that if you have no variation in your beat-to-beat -beat interval, you're about to die. So it's, a, it's better to have a big one, and it's also better to have it regular, like in the bottom graph. When it's regular, it means your sympathetic and your parasympathetic systems, two, two types of nervous system, are working in synchrony and not against each other. The sympathetic nervous system is like your gas pedal, and your parasympathetic nervous system is like your brake. And if you're putting them on at the same time, you're getting this jerky motion of your, of your heart rate. And if they're in synchrony, you're getting a regular variation with your breathing. And it turns out that you can teach people to get into this regular pattern, which HeartMath has called coherence. And so 
not only can you teach them, but you can come up with a pretty good engineering-based measure of how regular the pattern is, and we call it the coherence measure. We base it on power spectral analysis and a, uh, and a, uh, a proprietary algorithm that HardMath has developed, and it's, uh, it's pretty effective. So with those two ideas, we developed a, uh, a product at the end of, uh, of phase two, which was a iPad app with, uh, with several uh, divisions, which I will show out, and a pulse sensor uh, that, that is not the, the most elegant uh, one. It's an, it goes on your ear. It has a nice built-in circuitry that, that does the, uh, the algorithm, and it, uh, it provides the iPad with some pre-processed data. Uh, I can say in advance that we are now looking at wireless versions of, uh, of this sensor, uh, which uh, has a, a little more of a cool factor. This thing since tends to look a little dorky when, when, you've, uh, when you've got it on, and that's, uh, that's a commercial uh, thing that has to be taken into account. But it works. It's reliable, and, uh, and it, uh, it works. What we have in the, in the cognitive knowledge part of the, uh, of the app is, uh, is modules that, that can be looked at uh, in, in any order. One, one thing we, uh, we realized when we went into this was that young people, such as the ones that, that we were interested in, uh, in approaching in the military, don't do linear learning programs. They don't start at the introduction and, and go through to the conclusion. They just jump in and whatever hits their, their interest, that they're, they're going to hit on, on that first. So we have modules that, uh, that will stand alone. In the technique section, we actually teach the people how to, uh, how to regulate, to control their breathing, to control their emotions, and to get into that regular heart rate pattern that uh, we call coherence. We give them a chance to practice this. The, uh, the initial practice uh, we call basic training. This introduces you to some feedback mechanisms. It shows you your, your heart rate variability. It gives you a score. It gives you a, uh, a little uh, graph that, uh, that with a little pointer that moves from the red to the green. So you have various ways of, uh, of looking at that. Once the person has gotten pretty good moving up into a high level of, of coherence, we start challenging them. And the idea with the games is one, to, to give them something interesting to, to practice on, but also to practice staying in coherence while you're in a challenging situation. The thing about coherence is that it's, it's a skill that's different than meditation or relaxation because studies have shown that you're actually more cognitively efficient when you're in a coherent state and other studies have shown that if you can maintain a coherent state, you've actually built resilience against stress, the thing that we were trying to do at the beginning. Athletes sort of call that the zone when they're, when they're in a coherent state. So we give them one set of tests and then we increase the challenge. Uh, so they're doing a, a driving test and the idea is to maintain that. If they maintain coherence, they do better on the game. So there's a, a reward factor involved. We let them uh, test their, their knowledge uh, throughout the program and again, keeping uh, in mind trying to keep the interest in such a training app, uh, we made the tests uh, narrative based. So it's uh, your buddy is, uh, is over there in the corner, he looks terribly depressed, uh, he's afraid that he's going to mess up on this next mission, what do you tell him? How do, how do you get him out of this? That, that type of a, of a narrative. Because people are jumping around in the, in the program, and they're very likely to try to get to the most challenging games first, we have an adaptive coach that uh, makes suggestions. Maybe you should go back and actually learn the material 
maybe you should go back and actually study the, the techniques. So that has worked pretty well. We were very fortunate in this program uh, to be able to, uh, to perform a, a number of evaluations, empirical evaluations. We started with, uh, with usability evaluation and then we went on to efficacy and, uh, and utility evaluations. And the, the people who were particularly helpful were the Naval Center for Combat and Operational Stress Control and a, and a study we did with the San Diego Police Department. And then as you'll see, a study that we did with the Joint Task Force Guantanamo, uh, which, uh, which showed us uh, some, some of, the, of the problems that we might encounter in the, uh, in the future. Because our, our original uh, PM was a, uh, was a Navy commander, and because the first per people to take an interest in the, uh, in the program were Navy, uh, we oriented our training app toward Navy. So as we go into these evaluations, uh, the app has a, has a Navy uh, look to it. That, that's something that we made a decision not to make it a generic program, but to actually point it toward what looked like our most likely uh, customers. So one of the things that's useful when you have a, uh, a, a app with, with an interface is, is to actually run a, a usability study. And we were able to enlist the, uh, the George Mason University Psychology Department who, uh, who wants to run studies because it's what their, their graduate students do and their students get credit for it. And we found that on the, on the whole, the interface that we had developed was, was testing pretty well with the same age group that we anticipated in the, in the military, although the educational level was a little different. And, and yet there was uh, a question that the people said, the usefulness is high, but would I use it myself? Well, maybe. So we said we have to, we, that's something we have, to, we have to keep an eye on. We did a, uh, a study with the, with the Air Force out in uh, on Colorado. It was uh, not a, uh, a particularly well-designed study, uh, but it, it did provide some useful information very early in the program that said that the more you use the, uh, the SRT app, uh, the lower your, your score on a, on a stress uh, uh, criteria. So that was good. It was a, uh, a positive indication. The study that was conducted by NC Kosk uh, was, a, uh, was a much more refined and, uh, and rigorous one. Uh, one thing, it, it had a control group. So we were able to see that uh, whereas during a, uh, a eight-week intervention, the control group actually got, uh, got a little more stressed and a, and a little more depressed, the, the group that, uh, that followed the SRTS app went down significantly in their, uh, in their symptom. The other thing that, that we found, and, and this was... Uh, really of, of great importance to the Navy people was that we compared our application with, with a softer application called the progressive muscle relaxation. And what we found that is that people tended to use the techniques that we had provided them in the SRTS significantly more than, uh, than they used the progressive muscle relaxation. And that made uh, a big impression on our, uh, on our Navy partners. The other thing that, that we were happy to do because we, we had law enforcement in, the, in mind from the beginning of the program was to, uh, to do a small study with the uh, San Diego Police Department. And this study, uh, we used a, a type of, uh, of scale called the Personnel and Organizational Quality Assessment and what it does is, is take a, a number of, uh, of criteria that, that how, how well you're doing personally and how well you're doing in your organization. Well, police officers are generally happy with what they're doing, uh, even though they're un, under uh, severe stress. And so 
even though we started at a pretty good level, we went up in all of the major criteria, except for one which was the relationship with other officers, which stayed about the same, which was what we expected. We were very happy to see the improvements, and we were even happier to get a, an anecdotal report from, from one of the officers that, and I don't know whether it was a, a man or, or a woman who, who reported this, but the officer said, I, I rolled out on a, uh, on a, uh, a fairly stressful uh, uh, task to, to apprehend somebody, a suspect, and I got into a situation uh, where I had to call for backup. And uh, he said, normally, and this was uh, given to one of our, our, our study personnel, said, normally when I call for backup, I sound hysterical. And, uh, and this time, I didn't. And when the backup came, they said, we thought you were kidding because you sounded calm. And they said, what I had done is put my breathing exercises into, uh, into play and, uh, and got myself into what I thought was a coherent state, and it made an on-the-job uh, difference uh, in, uh, in my behavior and, and certainly in, uh, in how I sounded. The, uh, the evaluation study at, uh, at Joint Task Force Gitmo uh, was a challenging one, uh, mainly because people don't want to be there. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a, not a very good assignment. We were, we were studying detention personnel. Uh, they have terrible uh, things that they have to do. Uh, at, not, not that they have to do to the prisoners, but things that they get from the prisoners. It's just not a, uh, a particularly desired, uh, they're also away from their family. Their family can't visit them because it's a, it's a, it's a closed base. Uh, we added some, some assessments to, uh, to our program to take care of things that the psychologists wanted to, uh, to find out. The, the people that we gave it to were ostensibly volunteers, but they call it voluntold, if you've heard the, the term, which uh, means you can volunteer, but you have to. So uh, they, we had a, a generally not to uh, too happy uh, population. Uh, what we found out was that of the ones who used it, uh, we had uh, almost 50% uh, positive. So to quote uh, Mr. Trump, that was terrific, 50%, that's great, wonderful, uh, I'll take that. So we were, we were happy with this result. The other result that we were happy with was, was that when people were asked, what, what helped them in the program, they were able to point to the breathing and the, uh, and the emotion exercise of 51% uh, listed that as something that would be helpful in, uh, in uh, stress uh, resilience. So what did we know at the end of the evaluations? We had good indication that what we were doing was moving in the right direction. We were reducing stress levels. We were building uh, measures that related to uh, resilience. We were affecting on-the-job uh, performance. Uh, we, the other thing that might not be listed here, we, we had used a, a, a system that was oriented to, toward the Navy with Air Force, with Army, and with police officers and we saw positive results uh, all, all along the way. We had this thing that, that some people might have to convince themselves that building their resilience to stress is to their personal advantage. Some of the things we heard from our Gitmo personnel was I was too stressed to use a stress uh, resilience uh, program. So, okay, we'll have, we'll have to deal with that and, uh, and uh, do something about it. During the evaluation period, we also took the time to, to move from a, uh, from a mobile, purely mobile application uh, to a uh, web-based uh, application as well. This gives us 
the, uh, the ability to, uh, to deliver the training program on a variety of platforms. It gives us more flexibility. It, it allows us more easily to put in features such as chat and, uh, and leader, uh, uh, leader uh, dashboards and, and things that, that look like they're going to be useful in the, uh, in the commercial world. We also learned to define what we were doing as a, as a total program. Total program has, starts with some classroom training uh, for orientation. It has the, uh, the, the application delivered even, either on a mobile uh, device or by the web. And if possible, it has either personal mentoring, a one-to-one -one actual personal connection uh, with the trainee or the artificial intelligence equivalent of personal mentoring, which would be a very good feature to add to the application in the, uh, in the future. At this point, uh, we had uh, a, a plethora of, of opportunities. Where, where are we going to take it uh, next? We have corporate, we had sports that we're interested in, we have family, uh, we have test preparation, people have, have said that. Uh, we have a lot of areas in, in which we could go. Even if we narrow it down to the ones that look the, the most promising, uh, we still have uh, probably too many than, that, than we can handle at, uh, at once. So we, we narrowed it further. We said the ones that we're going to focus on are one, Navy application. As people have pointed out, we, we, have, we have dealt with, uh, with the Navy Center uh, for, for Combat and Operational Stress Control. They're located in San Diego. Uh, we have been together with them for several years. We are, have already put uh, the, the, uh, the app on hospital ships uh, to help with caregiver stress. Caregivers are, are under severe stress also and we are moving with them to add it to other Navy programs. So that is good. We have put our toe in the water by qualifying our app for the, uh, for the Apple Store. And so we, we are doing that. We are interested in the, in the use of the application for athletics and, uh, and, uh, and sports performance in general. And we have uh, connected with the U.S. Olympic Committee. Uh, we just finished a trial with, uh, with several speed skaters. Uh, the trial looks to have been uh, successful. We are working with the, uh, with the Olympic Committee to extend the, the trial and also to look for corporate sponsors, uh, for which I'll tell you in a second. Uh, when in law enforcement, we have partnered with, a, uh, with an organization called Blue Courage, which is already in the, in the law enforcement training uh, business, has clients reaching all the way from local uh, police agencies to the, to the FBI and, and federal agencies. We have a, uh, a collaboration with the San Diego Sheriff's Department uh, which has something like 2,000 uh, sworn officers. We are making a proposal at, as we speak to the National Institute of Justice, which is a branch of the uh, Department of Justice. And one thing I can say in, uh, in celebration of the DOD uh, application processes, they are orders of magnitude easier than the, uh, than the Department of Justice processes. So, so let, let me give, congratulate everybody involved in the websites that allow us to give, uh, to su submit proposals because they are much, much better than the, than the rest of the, uh, of the government. So what we've done for these applications, the initial ones, is say this was developed for the military you can use the same techniques that our fighting forces are using in your application. But that only goes so far. We, we really, this is uh, our, our 
a press release on our, on our uh, Apple store. Uh, what we really need are, are tailored applications, that people want to see pictures that, that look like them, they want to see narrative tests that deal with areas uh, that they're in, uh, involved in. They want to see modules that, that deal specifically with problems. They have law enforcement, particularly with the problem of de-escalation of, of confrontations, which is uh, all important right now and that this could be very helpful for because it allows people to stay in control and to remember what they learn during their training sessions. What happens frequently in these confrontations is that everybody gets excited and everybody forgets what, what they learn. So we need custom uh, versions. And the, and the question is, how do we get custom versions? What we're trying to do is avoid this, this well-known valley of death. The Valley of Death, as, as it was mentioned in, uh, I think, in the NSF uh, presentation, and people might have heard about it, and this is pretty appropriate because it shows a, a cactus here, which I, uh, I borrowed from somebody else's website. The, it's that problem of getting from, from the prototype, from what you've demonstrated, over here to the, uh, to the commercial world. And it, it's, not a, it's not a trivial problem, because in, in making that transition, you face many, many business uh, decisions. Where do, we, where do we get the money? How much do we, do we give away? Is it the whole company? Our company is involved probably in, in well over a dozen, maybe 15, maybe close to 20 projects at, at the moment. This one is important. Uh, to us, but it's, it's not the whole thing. And so where do we get that, that, that funding that we need to make the, the special versions that we think that are necessary for commercial success in each of the areas that we've chosen and there are areas behind that. So one is spin off a, a company and do just that, the, the, another alternative is, is to license the technology to companies that are already in that, uh, in that uh, area. And, and we're considering all of them, considering all of them of, of how to organize and how to take best advantage of the successes that we've had to date in the, in the program. So we, we are confident that we'll be able to do it uh, we always have uh, uh, have the the opportunity of having several balls in the in the air at once, and we think that we can maintain that and and move ahead in in all of the uh, all of the areas. What we want to do, as people have pointed out, we see the opportunity to do good uh, with this uh, with this app uh, that has been developed as part of, uh, of an SBIR uh, program, because it's necessary. It's needed in the, in the military, it's needed in law enforcement, it can be helpful in sports, it, it can be helpful in, uh, in, in general mental health, it can be helpful on an organizational level. And at the same time, we are not adverse to benefiting financially from, from this. So, so that's what, uh, what we hope will be the, the outcome as we go forward. We are obviously in the, in the phase three of this, uh, of this program, and I thank you for your attention and listening to it.